Welcome to the Thought Leader Podcast. Um, my name is Stefan Yandias. I'm your host. Everyone's, uh, I'm excited everybody's listening. Uh, two co-hosts today, Chris Gunawardena and uh, Joseph Mendoza. Uh, excited about this conversation. And then we have two special guests, uh, and we're going to do something a little different. Usually um, our episodes are shorter, and so we're going long. And uh, I'm very excited about this conversation. So the two guests we have, uh, first is Coach Burt. Uh, just a little about him. Coach Bird is a top business and performance coach, uh, number one leading authority in the world on activating the prey drive in people. He helps tens of thousands of people a year through speaking engagements, one-on-ones, uh, his work with Fortune 500 companies and their employees. He has spoken at 10X, Create Your Future, Door-to-Door Con, Century 21 Global Conference, the Cold Weather Bank, Glenn Blue, and helps over 400 plus people daily through his online training programs on Lightspeed TV. Uh, before becoming a business coach, Coach Burt built a national powerhouse at Riverdale High School uh, in Tennessee, where he was the youngest head coach in the state and took the girls' team to four conference titles uh, and state championships. So his new book, uh, Flip the Switch, uh, which I'm super excited to get into, uh, shows uh, that humans have this instinctual drive uh, not to uh, not for hunting prey, but for pursuing goals with perseverance and intensity. Uh, and so I'm super excited to get into that today. And then uh, Maxim Asnov is our second guest. A uh, guest, Maxim is the lead pastor of Awakening Church, which is the fastest growing church in Bulgaria. Uh, he's a humanitarian executive coach, uh, CEO of an executive coaching company uh, that uh, specifically works with high performance executives. Uh, entrepreneurs uh, and entertainers uh, and he has a new book called courage in crisis uh, right here which is super and amazing the ultimate guide to success uh, so in his book maxim shares his own unique story of overcoming crisis and poverty uh, and he talks about uh, how we deal with tough battles in life um, to never give up never give in uh, never surrender and to have incredible courage so maxim has been on a tour yeah. all like a global tour, literally talking to thousands of people. Mm. And so we're happy to have him today. Great to be here. Uh, so yeah, that was a lot of intro because you guys do a lot <laughs> right. of cool stuff. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so, uh, man, I'm super excited about this. Um, I'm excited. So yeah, happy, happy you guys are here. It's amazing that we have two guests that are from out of the state, yeah. one out of the country, and to have you guys in person with us in our presence is absolutely amazing. And you guys are literally the best at what you do. And uh, coach, we were talking about on the way over here, you know, about your book, Maxim, you've been here with us a couple of weeks now, and nice. you guys are in similar modes right now. You're in book mode. How do we get this message out to millions of people? And yeah. uh, we believe through this podcast, Chris, that it's definitely going to help. We're going to reach a lot of people mm-hmm. and you guys are going to impact many lives. So excited for today's interview. Yeah. And I think it right now it's so appropriate, the content that you guys have come up with in both of your books and really coaching people through this time. I think everyone took a, mm-hmm. a step back during COVID and people have been trying to look for their spark to go into this next year. And so I believe both of your books really kind of activate that within an individual to really push them to where they should be and where God wants them to be. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I'd love to get into your guys' stories a little bit. So Coach, Coach Burt, what's your story? Uh, and then uh, how'd, you, how'd you write this book? The story is I grew up in a real small town in Tennessee. I was raised by a single mother who had me when she was 16. Yeah. She she kind of an initially instilled this prey drive in me. Mm. She kind of taught me we don't whine, we don't complain, we don't make excuses. We show up, we grow up, and we deliver. Yeah. Uh, and I kind of found my voice very early in life at 15 years old when I started coaching junior pro basketball, mainly because a person asked me to. Okay. And at, when I, as soon as I started coaching basketball, I knew this was what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah. So stayed in basketball from 15 to 31, uh, wow. became a head coach at a large high school in Tennessee, second largest high school in Tennessee, and kind of took that place and turned it around from never winning to a national championship team. And that's really what started my cycle of writing books, is so many people wanted to know what I was doing with the kids, how I was producing the wins. And that kind of started me on the, on the cycle of wanting to write and speak and coach yeah. uh, in different forms. Wow. What's interesting about your, uh, just from your point of view, is I guess being a coach, you know, so much of your time, you're working with uh, individuals who are obviously talented. And so you're not only thinking through 
how to unlock that talent, but mm-hmm. um, what drives them? How do I motivate somebody? Yeah. Um, what's interesting? So tell tell us a little bit about just this whole idea of prey drive. Yeah. Uh, and what's the central concept uh, that you wrote about? Prey drive is prevalent in animals, specifically a dog. A dog has a prey drive, which is its instinct to stalk, capture, and kill prey. I heard that at a workshop when I was 41 years old. And um, I can associate a concept, deconstruct that concept, codify it, package it, and then deliver it in a way that activates something deep inside of another person. That's my gift. And uh, and so as soon as I heard that those two words together, I, I told my wife, I think humans have a prey drive. Mm. Yeah. It is their instinct to see something with the eyes or in the mind, in the imagination, and to have the persistence and the intensity to pursue that. And so I deconstructed the top 20 motivational theories. I codified those theories. I then basically said, based on 31 years of experience, this is how you activate that drive deep inside of a human. And I trademarked it in humans. Uh, so I'm the only person that can talk about it in wow. humans. Uh, and so I'm, I'm saying, I'm asserting that a human has a prey drive, which is their instinct to see something and pursue it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. I'd, I'd love to ask Maxim what you think. So Maxim, you have such a unique story. Yeah. Um, that's really like a one in a million story. <laughs> and so uh, number one, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about just your journey. Um, but I feel like it has everything to do with... Um, it, it seems like you always had this instinctual drive from 13, 14, 15. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear about mm-hmm. that. So when I was, um, I was first born in Bulgaria, obviously in Sofia, which is the capital city, in one of the largest ghettos in Eastern Europe, and grew up without a father. My father left when I was uh, uh, in my mother's womb. And so growing up in that environment, it was um, very interesting because uh, some of the things that I look at now that were part of my story then, now I understand how tough it was. Now I understand that it was tough to live without running water and electricity for three years Mm -hmm. Uh, and to see your grandma die at 12, who was my primary uh, caretaker. Then to see my mom had to run to another country because she had a boyfriend who was abusive, almost killed her. So all of that experiences, though, activated the courage, yeah. mm-hmm. um, the boldness, because you couldn't have courage yep. without a crisis. Right. You need crisis in order for you to sure. tap into what's inside. So it's almost as if it wouldn't be possible for me to do what I'm doing or even for Coach Bird to do what he's doing if there were not some difficulties that we went through in life. And I believe that every story has value in it. Mm -hmm. But if you can extract the lesson from Mm -hmm. the legacy, it Mm -hmm. can turn into a recipe. Yeah. So you can do it again and again and again and again. Almost as if if you know the process of uh, making a certain, uh, let's let's talk about a certain dish. You know the ingredients, but then you also know the steps. Mm -hmm. Then you can repeat it over and over. So I feel like if you can find courage and know how to activate your courage in life, you can repeat success at different levels again and again and again. But every time you will need a difficulty, an opponent, an enemy, a fight, a crisis, in order for you to manifest that inner potential, that prey drive that Mm -hmm. is installed in you by the creator. That's amazing. Chris, I'd love for you to ask a question. Yeah, Yeah, so... You know, understanding the mechanics of not only going through a crisis or going through a struggle, but how do you break that down to something on an individual level? So like for you, Coach Bert, you had to really deal with athletes, um, not only instilling in them the desire to drive on their personal excellence, but Mm -hmm. to work as a team. Mm -hmm. And then Pastor Maxim, you do it on the same way with executive Mm -hmm. coaching as well. And and both of you operate in that way. So what do you think is something that um, that you guys have put into the people that you coach that helps them not only succeed as an individual, but also impact the people that are on their team or around them? Well, when you think about potential, you know, my definition of potential is kinetic energy that is stored until activated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a potential. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of, of what comes along and activates that potential, which is what I think a good coach does. 
Mm -hmm. And so a good coach um, goes to work on the knowledge for the mind, the skill for the body, the desire for the heart, the confidence for the spirit. Uh, and I'm a big believer in remarkable boldness. You know, at some point you move from co from confidence to remarkable boldness, which is what a lot of people need to do big things in the world. So based on my background, that's what I did for, for young people for 15 years is parents would bring me their kids and say, my daughter has a lot of potential. She just needs X number of things. What she really needed was someone who was very skilled at activating that potential. And then when you put that potential together with a team and a team unit, right? The, uh, a definition of a team would be where the strengths of some compensate for the weaknesses of others. Right. It's complementary. Yes. And so each person brings their own unique skill set to the team unit and the and the, the the collective group is better than the sum of the individual units. Mm. And that's really what a great team is. So that's really what I did for 16 years is activate that potential, put them in a position to win, and then give them uh, the confidence that they needed to go perform at a very high level. It's no different than what I do today with adults. Yeah. So it was mm -hmm. great training for me. Adults are just big kids. Right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's beautiful and very, very true. You know, in my book, I share a lot of my experiences that are from my teenage years because mm -hmm. those were very formative for me. Uh, growing up, as I said earlier, in that environment, I had to find my way through. So a lot of the lessons, I'm just repeating them at the highest level possible. Yep. People sometimes ask me, but that happened when you were like uh, 15. Yeah, but that's what I've been doing like my whole life. Yep. I think that many people stop doing the things that made them successful as yep. soon as they arrive at a certain level of success. Yep. But coming back to building teams and leaders within um, a team, within an organization, I really believe that there are a few things that are important that I'm looking for for when I'm building a team. I'm looking for first um, what I call character. Uh, I'm looking for character is what you are when when people are not watching, mm -hmm. when you are not uh, under the lights of the mm -hmm. projectors. I think that that's very underestimated in our culture today and that creates a lot of the struggle and problems that we see in the world. So I believe that character is important. Then I also believe that chemistry is important. Mm -hmm. chemistry is mm -hmm. how you deal with people within the team and then coach board can explain much more about that because even within teams many times you could have great players that get don't get along right. together mm -hmm. and if, if you have like this happen at euro cup of soccer because we follow soccer in my part of the world or even at the yes. world cup too yeah. uh, of soccer where you saw yeah. people that were like incredibly gifted athletes the best of the best but they didn't have good chemistry they end up losing to teams who are not superior. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. Mm. So I think that if you look at a person's character and build that, and if you look at a person's uh, chemistry, how he gets along with other people, uh, only a person who is very large on the inside and confident in himself and his gifts can play at the highest level with people who are playing mm -hmm. at that level. Does that make sense? Yeah, because course. other people, they feel immediately they feel endangered or they they start competing with somebody that should be complimenting. Uh, mm -hmm. So then I would put charisma. So those are the three C's that I look for when I'm building a team or an organization. I'm looking for character, chemistry, but I'm also looking for charisma. But I intentionally put charisma on the last level because I've seen charismatic people who just don't have character and charisma and they end up mm -hmm. uh, failing and sabotaging process. So I really believe that if you as a leader want to grow, you should work on those three. And if you want to grow your uh, team, I think that those are three very, very strategic uh, things that you should look to. And then of course it's courage because in the end of the day, mm -hmm. if you're gifted, mm -hmm. if you get along with people, if you have a great character, but you don't have the guts mm. Mm. to get out there right. yeah. and show up and show your face and share right. your message or play the game, whatever it is that you need to do, you're not doing anything. So it always come back, it comes back to that pray drive. It right. always comes back to that courage, to that ability mm. to take action in right. life. So I really believe that if you can have these qualities and then take action on them, 
there are really no limits to what you can achieve in life. And I can mm. say that as a person right. who, you know, by most statistics and common sense logic, I mm. should have been mm -hmm. uh, a drug dealer or dead mm. or in a jail cell. Mm -hmm. And thank God I'm here today and I can share that message. But I really believe it's because of the character, the charisma, the chemistry, and then the courage to take mm -hmm. massive action and see the vision that you have on your in your heart mm -hmm. manifested in the world. Yeah. That's powerful. You know what I really love about mm -hmm. both these books when I'm looking at it, you know, Courage and Crisis, The Ultimate Guide to Success and Flip to Switch is they're both essential mm -hmm. for the times that we're living in right now. Mm -hmm. When you think about the C word COVID, right? Mm -hmm. When you when you when you look back mm -hmm. there was a lot of crisis mm -hmm. in COVID whether that was with your employment, mm. loss of income, loss of job. A lot of people lost things, right? That was a crisis during COVID. And the same thing, Coach Burt, with your book, it's like, think of the people who lost that prey drive. Mm -hmm. It was just sucked out of them, it was depleted. And now you yeah. guys both have messages that are literally built for the times that we're living in today. So share a little bit why, why this book, Coach, because you're an author of 17 books. Am I wow. saying that right? 17. So 17 books. Yeah. But I think you would probably agree with me that this book, <laughs> for the time we're living in today, wow. is probably your best. Yeah. Well, it's definitely my best book. And uh, I think, you know, Sharon Lecter, who are, who's our yeah. friend, you know, that wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad with Kiyosaki, you know, said to me, Coach, you are prey drive. If there's two words that mm. describe who you are, it is prey drive. And it's on your license plate. And so. it's on my license plate. Uh, <laughs> I love that. In, Mar cool. in March of 2020, um, my coaching business was losing a quarter of a million a month. Wow. Because I couldn't speak. Mm -hmm. There were no speaking engagements. We, we generate about 3,000 leads every 90 days for my coaching business. Mm. And the primary way we do that is me being out in front of people. Right. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I love, I love speaking. I love, cause mm -hmm. that's coach, that's coaching to me. Right. And so at first, um, I moved into fear, which is what a lot of people do. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and really under fear or pressure, people really do three things. They, uh, you know, psychologists would tell us they fight, they come out swinging, right. mm -hmm. they, they flee. And, and they're now saying there's a third thing. They freeze which is what a lot of people are doing right now wow. yeah. is, they, is they don't do anything. Wow. So at first I was afraid, but I, I have learned to use fear as fuel, number one, mm -hmm. and I've learned to convert ne what, would, what would seem to be negative emotions mm -hmm. to positive things. Mm -hmm. So what that really did is it activated a drive inside of me mm -hmm. that I had a nemesis, I had an adversary, I had something stand between me and my goals, and I was afraid of losing everything. Mm -hmm. wow. And I found another gear. Mm. So it tapped into the competitiveness of me as a former championship right. coach. Right. I, I wasn't gonna win, I wasn't gonna lose. Right. So so what I really needed that crisis, and I wrote down when when Maxim was talking, greatness needs an event. So true. Mm. See, you know, we don't know a person's great until they have an event for right. them to yeah. step so into true. their greatness. Right. And which is why the courage comes in during a crisis. Well, that was an event for me to step up and go, okay. Mm -hmm. We got to find a new way to win. Sure. Yeah, and mm -hmm. as you know, we started doing virtual events. We right. did millions of dollars in virtual events. I had never done virtual events before, but right. I was forced. The fear created a creativity in me, mm. and I'm like, we're going to find a way to win. It's going to be a fight, but we're going to find a way to win. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I think about for a lot of people. But but that's why they need Pray Drive today. Right. See, Pray Drive is not specific to a person that's complacent. Mm -hmm. uh, or or lazy. I've coached people making you know five hundred thousand a month that lost their prey drive. It's not specific to the amount of money you're making. It's specific to you and your potential, and and you feeling like there's another another gear mm. for you, another level for you to play at, which is really everybody, right? Wow. But we need an activator, right? Yeah. And many times it is an external. Although the prey drive is inside of you, I write about in the book that that it is actually motivated or activated by something external from you. Yeah. Something yeah. happens to you, there is a stimulus, and mm -hmm. that stimulus activates the drive inside of you Powerful. to play at a higher level. Powerful. Oh, so, I mean, really what you're talking about is almost like a, a, like a playbook for how to deal with tough situations. Because, um, like, when I, think of, of, uh, when I think of a drive, I think of 
uh, in a person who's in a situation, they obviously don't know the answer. They don't know how That's to right. deal with it, which is why they experience fear and mm -hmm. all these range That's of right. emotions and responses. Right. Um, if they're in that situation, if they're in a crisis, they're probably overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Your ability to, um, you're probably fractured in some way mm -hmm. in that you don't have a, a, a clear vision of the future and mm -hmm. how to navigate the path mm -hmm. forward. So I guess what are the steps that uh, someone would take from your point of view? If, if, if you're an entrepreneur, you're someone just dealing with life and you find yourself fearful, not knowing what to do, yeah. um, what are the, the phases of prey drive and how do I apply that? Yeah, yeah. There, there's three phases of prey drive. First, the prey drive must be activated. And in the book, I talk about five things that activate it. Fear is one of those things. Okay. Competition is one of those things. Embarrassment is one of mm -hmm. those things. Uh, environment is one of those things. And exposure. So the prey drive has to be activated. Yeah. And it has to be activated every day, right? Um, mm -hmm. I always say we go to bed tired and we, and we wake up hungry. Yeah. <laughs> right. It all goes to zero right. at midnight. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and that reactivates the drive. Well, once the drive is activated, which has to be every day, although, uh, you know, and I'm sure you can speak to this, too. Although we write books that are positive and motivational, we we don't wake up motivational every day. Mm. So true. Yeah. We wake up just like everybody else does. Tired, so frustrated, yeah. kids, family. And so I have to activate my prey drive every day and I have a yeah. cycle I go through to do that. Uh, and then once it's activated, there must be a persistence to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Eugene Peterson wrote a book called Long Obedience in the Same Direction. Wow. He's a pastor, and he's talking about faith, and he's talking about oh, this long obedience. But but the truth is, this is where most people fall off the wagon. Yeah. They start, and then they fail to follow through. And then they experience guilt. So true. And the guilt is associated with grief. They're yeah. grieving their lost potential. Okay? So wow. So then there's a persistence to that. Then there must be an intensity, and this is what I this is what was missing when I got into the business world. When I was a coach, we got a game, we got a championship. Right. We, we there there was so much more intensity wow. toward a target, and then I started coaching business people, and I'm like, nobody's got any intensity. There's no target. There's no timelines. There's no right, and that really represents the three phases of the prey drive: activation, persistence, intensity. Wow. That. Wow. Yeah. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, Coach was talking about the new one. You said freezing. Freeze. Right? Yeah. Freeze. So you got failure, freeze, and the third F was Yeah, you fight, you flee, or you freeze. And then you throw in this word, Maxim, that you talk about a lot, pressure. Yes. When you hear pressure, I mean, as as a basketball coach sitting next to you, when we hear wow. a pressure, right, you're thinking of opposing defenses. Yeah, yeah. You're thinking of maybe being yeah. down by five in the fourth quarter. But talk about this pressure, but how the pressure mm. can be used mm. in your favor. Well, when you think about it, the pressure engine was the trigger to the industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. So when you think about pressure, you should think about one of the greatest activators of potential. Yep. Wow. You never know the power you have until you undergo pressure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we have been revolving around in this conversation. Those are the triggers. Those are the things that help you. I remember one day I was coming back to a house with no running water, no electricity. I was maybe like 15, 15, 16 years old. And um, because of the cold, it was like, I don't know, what, in Fahrenheit, but it was minus 26 Celsius. It was a record. Freezing. Freezing winter. That's real cold. Everything. That's real cold. Really For all you Americans out there. Yes. So then the pipes, everything had frozen. And mm -hmm. for some reason, the dirty pipeline had exploded. And so the whole level in the house where I was living was covered in feces. It was covered in... Mm. And crap, know, poop. In poop. Mm. And so there am I as a teenager. I decide I'm going to try and shuffle as much as I can. I found a shuffle in our backyard. I started shuffling it out, mm -hmm. trying to get into the bed where I'm going to sleep. Mm. And then I realized, because it was getting dark in the winter, months is uh it's getting dark earlier so i i thought i thought okay i can't take all this dirt out but i can import snow because it was so cold in the right. house so i was bringing in the snow and created a snow path to my bed covered myself with eight blankets and coming back to the question that stefan asked earlier 
What are some of the steps? I think I found something that night that later on I read in in the ideas of uh, some of the greatest psychologists and uh, one book, Men's Quest for Meaning, mm -hmm. was one of the books that I just wrote it a few years back, but I realized that's what was happening to me. Yeah, by Viktor Frankl. Mm -hmm. By Viktor Frankl, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I realized that as I was laying in the bed, <clears throat> Because I already had these dreams of helping people, mm. traveling the world, speaking, mm -hmm. being a minister, helping people like myself. Right. I already had this vision in my heart. So as I was laying in the bed, covered with eight blankets, I couldn't even turn, just, you know, dressed up. I was thinking, one day, this will be a story that I'm going to share. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to empower people with that story. Mm -hmm. To think that this was 15 years ago. And since then, I've been in over 35 countries of the world. Met all my heroes and the people who inspired me to be the, the man I am today. Mm -hmm. Met and coached politicians. Met presidents. Met millionaires and billionaires. Mm -hmm. And even sitting on this panel with such an amazing group of people. And Coach Bert. And discussing these concepts. Just show you that really everything is possible. But one of the things that I advise people when they find themselves in a very tough situation is to try and pull themselves back out of it. And mm -hmm. just imagine it as a story. Mm -hmm. Like look at it from a different perspective. It's not easy to do. It's scientifically proven that this is easier for people who <coughs> do read books. That's why I do recommend that you read books. I read like 50 mm -hmm two books a year, that's my minimum. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons I do it, because a book or a story that you read helps your brain develop the capability to, to put you in a place where you're looking at a story and imagining the different outcomes mm -hmm. without you being in the story. So if you could do it, and you do it often mm -hmm. with books, then you can do it for your own life. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's what you could do. And I really believe that's a powerful exercise to just say, okay, if this was not my life, if this was just a story of a person, mm -hmm how would the hero of this story act within this situation? Right. And then try to act like that hero. And that way you're becoming a person you're proud of tomorrow. Wow. That way you're becoming a person who can look at your life and say, I did this, I stood up my ground. But it was almost as if you were like looking at yourself from the perspective mm -hmm. of a reader or somebody who is looking at a story. So this is one of the things that I have been using a lot in my life. Even when COVID hit, I had my whole team, you know, my all my organizations in a Zoom call. My foundation was there. My church was there. My coaching business was there. And I was telling them, guys, this is going to end. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be forever. Don't listen right. to all these speakers of doom and gloom saying this is the end mm -hmm. of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's a beginning of a very tough crisis for the world because i could only uh, already think what are these lockdowns and things going to do to the economy of the mm -hmm. world and to you know social structures and create war and everything yeah. that we're seeing happen mm -hmm. like ukraine is literally you know so close to bulgaria right so i was telling this to my team but i told them let's not think about this now let's think that we are reading a book mm -hmm. and this is happening in that book how do we imagine the heroes, mm. like the great people? Right. What are they doing in that? And then we decided, yes, those people, they are not firing anybody. They're doubling down on the mission. They're serving the poor and needy. They're distributing food. So the next thing you know, we are distributing tons of food to people who are locked in their, ho in their homes. Mm -hmm. We are out on the street mm -hmm. helping the homeless, helping people mm -hmm. we need. So... I really believe that if you had only one like tool to use, mm -hmm. it's not the easiest tool, but it's a very powerful tool to help change your life. Yeah. Let's say you find yourself in a situation where you find something about someone, about someone you love. Maybe you were mm -hmm. betrayed by your friend or something happened in your life that's very dramatic and a crisis. Mm -hmm. Pull back and ask yourself the question, almost like uh, I think it was Napoleon Hill who wrote in his book, that he would, in, in his imagination, he would talk to Abraham Lincoln and all these mm. heroes of his. Mm -hmm. And he, was, uh, he would ask them, what would you do in that situation? Mm. He would have Jesus on a table, mm. right? And ask him, like, how would you act? Mm. So I really believe that 
that's really, really powerful. And it has helped me act in my life in a way that um, is like, it's one thing to achieve success and have mm -hmm. a lot of money. It's another thing to be very, very happy. Right. And achieve success and have a lot of money. Wow. Those are two different stories. Mm -hmm. And for me, the greatest success is not the level of achievement or only that I'm known, but the fact that I go to bed each night without any inner contradiction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that make sense? Of course. Yes. Yeah. And a big part of it is that I ask myself, is this the man that I want to be? So what's the story I want to share mm -hmm. in five years? Because your situation now is your story right. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you better act like it's a story that you want to share with the world. Man, I, lo I love both their backstories. Mm. And uh, as I'm sitting here, coach, I'm thinking, uh, you talk about this GoPro all the time. <laughs> and a lot of times we think of a GoPro as a device, GoPro right? Camera. Remember the GoPro, Go, GoPro <laughs> yeah. cameras? And I think yeah. they're like on number 10 now. Yeah. And um, you know, you talk about this GoPro, but you talk about it every day, GoPro every day. And as one wow. coach who's coaches high school baseball and to, to another coach here, you think wow. like, when I talk to my kids today, it's like, man, I just want to know what it's like to be a professional basketball player just one yeah. day. Yeah. But here you talk about what it's like to go pro every single day. Can you share a little bit about maybe some steps or how somebody can go pro every single day? Well, the, f the first thing a person has to do is make a decision. And that word, de so that word decide means to kill something off. Mm. The word decision means to cut something away. Wow. And um, when I was 25 years old, I was in my third year of being a head coach. And we used to take our players over and watch other people win championships. It was wow. like a field yeah. trip. Of course. Okay, in Tennessee. So you would leave school, go watch other people win championships. And I remember sitting in the stands just getting upset because we had beat we had beaten some of the teams that were out there playing and right in the middle of the game i'm like everybody up get on the bus right now yeah and i got on the bus and the the players looked at me and they're like what's going on with coach what's up and i'm like we're not we're not coming back to watch other people win championships powerful the only way we come back is if we're playing for a championship mm. and that was a decision see that 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 was a line in the sand mm -hmm. when i wrote this book Something shifted in me, and I said, "I, you know, we all emulate people. Mm -hmm. So true. But at some point in your life, you have to move from emulating people to becoming Come one on. of those people wow. that wow. other people emulate. Mm -hmm. So true. Right? And, and there's mm -hmm. something that happened to me when I spoke at 10X uh, a few years ago. After speaking on stage with all of those great people, uh, a lot of people asked me what I learned. And I, and I said, man, I learned I, believe, I, I de deserve to be on that stage. Right. Yeah. Spent my life preparing for that. And you did. Right. And that that was a validation point. So wow. going so going pro is there's areas of life that we're still amateur in, we dabble with. The pro decides. The amateur dabbles. Wow. The pro goes all in. The the amateur can't make an investment. They can't make a commitment. They can't back a commitment up by time mm -hmm. and energy and resources. So really what I'm saying, we need to leave our amateur desires behind. So right, and powerful. and that, that that's in every area of your life, by the way, mm -hmm. physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. spiritually. Yeah, I can tell you at what moments in my life mm -hmm. I went pro in my in my faith. Mm -hmm. I went pro physically. I went pro mentally. I went pro emotionally. Mm -hmm. Right, like like right. it's a it's a decision we got to make every day, you know, and 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 we all have this desire to contract. I mean. I mean, we we want to take the path of least resistance. Very few make that step to really go pro. Wow. I don't want to dabble anymore. No. Wow. Yeah. 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 I think really what it boils down to is really finding what your purpose is and what's your aim. So because I think a lot of times, like you said about people dabbling, I feel like yeah. people do that a lot and they waste many years mm -hmm. of their life dabbling in something. Oh, that looks successful. Let me try that. Right. That looks yeah. like an opportunity. Let me try that. Instead of figuring out what their true purpose is in life and really zeroing in on that, and that's something you really cover in uh, Courage and Crisis, mm -hmm. is finding your purpose. Yes. Um, and I think for you, going through the difficulty that you went with, something that, that sustained you through it um, is that you were able to know what your purpose was, and you knew that yeah. the setback that you were in was only mm -hmm. temporary, um, and that you would have a testimony of it, but can you kind of discuss what it is really to find your purpose? Well, one of the things that we all face in life, I think, is that 
we have what they call limiting beliefs, mm-hmm. or I like to think of it as contradicting values. And I found that very early on because I am a minister. And as a Christian minister, I started speaking at age 15. So I was coming out of that madness and I was finding my calling. But then I had all these preconceived ideas through environment, through my own limitations, through other people that if you are this, you cannot be that. If you do this, then it doesn't mean, does that make sense? Yes. Yep. So I couldn't, um, I couldn't bring together the capitalist who wants to make money, build mm. businesses and create wealth for myself and for other people and the humanitarian, the person that right. actually wants to feed the poor and help the needy and create places where mm. everybody is loved and accepted. I, I couldn't bring these two things together. Mm. And I think that many times people uh, kind of sell themselves short yeah. and sell their vision and their purpose short because they cannot bring this these contradicting values that they have. So one of the things is that within the Christian community or this, let's say this, the people who are more spiritually oriented, many times they would look for almost like a supernatural or a divine calling, mm-hmm. call them or something, you know, that is so high above transcendent. And I understood at very early age that me being born in exactly this time of history, me being born at this family, in this country, and being in this room now, like I don't need an angel to appear to me right. to tell me that this is my calling. Mm. Yeah. Do you know how difficult yeah. it is yeah. out of seven billion <laughs> right. people to be in that room? Yeah. Like, <laughs> obviously I had to be here. Yeah. So I understood that destiny is hidden in every day. Mm. but you just have to be looking for it. Mm. And so then I understood that we come prepared, 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 Mm. prepared with certain giftings, with certain desires, Mm. with certain dreams that are in our hearts. Right. And those are almost like a map or, Mm. you know, a tool to help you orient yourself in this thing we call life. So for you to discover your purpose, number one, I believe you have to be super honest with yourself because a lot of the people that I coach, uh, I coach them out of their disappointment. It's like a woman that thought she wanted to make all this money and go high up in the corporate world. And then she hits 40 and she's depressed because Mm -hmm. she doesn't have children, doesn't have a marriage doesn't have anybody in her life. And she comes to me with panic attacks and she has all this money, she has all these cars, she has a mansion, but she's miserable. And the reason is she wasn't honest with herself at the time of what she really wanted. She thought, she convinced herself that she wanted this, but she actually wanted that. Mm -hmm. It's very tough to be honest with yourself about what you want. But if you are really honest with yourself about what your real vision and desire is, I believe that's the only way for you to be really successful and satisfied and happy with your life because there is always going to be somebody who is making more money than you there is always going to be somebody more articulate than you there is always going to be somebody who is better in something than you but there will never be another you so you might as well Mm -hmm. get to be the best at you so if you're the best at you your vision your purpose whatever the creator endowed you with then you can really not just have success, but have real satisfaction and meaning in your life. Because the world we are living today, I feel like is really starving for meaning. People are doing a lot of things, but they're not feeling like it's meaningful. So for you to find meaning, I really believe you need to find your own vision. So success is not like, um, as people ask me, what is success? I tell them, it's whatever you think it is. Success is not the same for me and for you and for anybody. Right. So everybody's idea of success is different. And that's not a problem. It's good as long as you know what you're doing. Because this is how the world works. Uh, it works with alternative laws. If I'm sitting at this table, I'm not sitting at another table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Cost. Yeah. So it's opportunity cost. Mm-hmm. So if I'm spending time with you guys, I'm not spending time with my kids currently. Mm-hmm. 
It makes sense, right? So then I have to realize, do I actually want to do that trade? Right. Because everything in life is a price. You're paying a price to be whoever you want to be. So it's okay as long as you know that you're not making a deal with the devil or you're not selling your soul or you're not doing something like a transaction that then makes you really miserable. Mm -hmm. So for me to be touring America and speaking the message of my book for three weeks, I had to calculate how bad do I want it? Yeah. Do I want it enough right. not to see my two children for two, three weeks? Mm -hmm. It's the longest I, have, I haven't seen them. Mm -hmm. do, I do I want it enough to be missing from home? And all these different variables. Yeah. Right. So I believe that we should make choices like this for our life. And then for some people, this sounds like, oh, but I don't have a book. I'm still not at this level. And then this is when I would come back to what Coach Bird just said. Mm -hmm. Go pro. But don't right. go pro just on one thing in your life. Mm -hmm. Like I want to have the body of an athlete. Mm -hmm the mind of a philosopher, the soul of a spiritual leader. Mm. And I know that it might sound like, oh, but this is impossible. Yeah, but what happens when you're reaching for the impossible mm. is you become extraordinary. Yeah. So the fact that you will never reach it, it should not stop you to try. Right. Yeah. So now I'm working on having the body of an athlete. I'm also working on having the mind of an entrepreneur. I'm working on having the soul of a spiritual leader. So I want to be pro yep, at right. everything I do. I want to dress like a model. <laughs> you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. You're there. Hey, you're there. Are you Speaking like of modeling, I want to live fully. I, I'm sporting the shirt for the book. And thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. Opportunity in crisis. So yeah. right, mm. danger and opportunity. Yeah. Crisis it, it, in Chinese it, equals exactly. danger and opportunity. Awesome. You know, you're talking about purpose, Maxim, yeah. and and you said a word in there. You said value. Yeah. And. Um, Coach, I feel like we're living in a world right now where you're you're probably going to correct me on the stat, but what is it? Eighty some percent of Americans say they're a coach, or or want to be a coach. Seven hundred thousand people in the United States that call themselves a coach right now. Shocking. Yeah. And and Thank God I'm here not they are. In America. <laughs> <laughs> here they are wanting to what? Create value. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you talk about this thing about becoming a contender. We live in a world and a society that's like a microwave mm -hmm. that wow. people want to create value overnight. Mm -hmm. Instant success. Yeah. Why? Social media paints this picture of you can mm -hmm. become famous overnight on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the big one is YouTube. But talk a little bit about creating value in the world and this whole thing on becoming a contender. Well, and, and I want to go back to something he said before I answer this. There's, there's studies that show that 87% of people live their entire lives and never find their purpose. Wow. So wow. Yeah. So it's a big problem. Wow. Did you guys hear that? 80 87, what? 87%. 87%. That's For all you watching, 87%. Yeah. Wow. Now, 83% of all stats are made up, so I don't know if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but the truth is. That's uh, so good, though. The truth is. Oh, man. I, co I coach a lot of people. I mean, I mean, sometimes up to a couple thousand people a month. And, and I would tell you, there's two things, and this I'm going to associate this with value. When you ask a person what their talents are, mm -hmm. yeah, they can't tell you. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So true. And when you ask them what problem that they could solve with their unique skills, right. they can't tell you. So true. Okay. So that's why I always say money changes hands when problems are solved. Yeah. The the value creation is, in my opinion, is using your skills and abilities to do one of two things, solve a problem for another person mm -hmm. yeah. or help another person with their ambition, with their goals and dreams so to reach that. Powerful. To me, purpose comes through that exchange. Mm. See, I give you my talent right, and I help you solve your problem right. and you come back and say, thank you. Of course. And that gives me purpose because mm. I use my talent to help you. Mm -hmm. You see where I'm going? Of course. And I get more opportunity, by the way. Of course. And more people come and say, hey, will you help me with that talent? Exactly. So to me, value creation is first I get clear in my abilities and I really start to learn how to, I say, find, package, market, and ultimately monetize. Mm. So what unique abilities, skills do you have, which comes from your past? Mm -hmm. Right. All the scripting, all mm -hmm. of the, the unique mentors, unique education, breakdowns, mm -hmm. breakthroughs that you've had mm -hmm. makes you unique, mm -hmm. okay? So how do, I, how do I know what value I create and then how do I go out every day in the marketplace and activate this? When I wrote this book, you know, Ed Milet asked me, what problem does the book solve? 
And I said, well, the, the problem of complacency, number one, because a lot of people become complacent, right. mm-hmm. which is a gradual settling to a place of mediocrity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it solves that problem. And for all the people who believe they have more potential than what they're showing. Yeah. So the way I'm yeah. creating value is mm-hmm. using my unique past as a former championship coach, right. my know-how mm-hmm. of activating the drive in people and putting it into a book that helps people. Now, mm-hmm. And then I did eight weeks completely free for any person that bought my book. I did eight-week book club with me. To create value, wow. which no one's done, Stefan. Yeah, yeah. Ever. So, that's awesome. so that's beautiful. you know, spending. Really cool. So I just said, if you buy that's the book, I'm gonna spend eight weeks that. with you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's great that you did that. So it's my way of creating value, right. and that is value creation. Wow, yeah. Stefan, I feel like you're gonna go home tonight and you're gonna research that 83 percent stats are right. all false. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're gonna well, go no, home I'm listening to all this. This was brilliant. Yeah. 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 And uh, you know, there's a couple of things I'm really picking up. Um, I think the really what we're talking about is the road to success, right? So you have individual people who are going through a set of challenges and uh, they're having to do a, a few things. And so we're essentially giving them a roadmap mm-hmm. to kind of making it through uh, those moments in life. And and so the steps that, that I've, if, if I could like synthesize both mm-hmm. of your lessons into kind of one track is mm-hmm. the first is step one is you have to make a decision on what do you want? Mm-hmm. And so that's question number one. It's like you're in the situation you're in, you're looking at the horizon of the future, and you have to really ask yourself, what do you want to do and who do you want to become? And mm-hmm. I love, Coach Burt, your idea that you have of, of, of challenging people to, to think past emulation mm-hmm. and really move towards becoming. Yep. Uh, because I think that, especially in the hustle culture, uh, it's easy to emulate working mm-hmm. hard. It's yeah. easy to emulate. I'm. I. I have a purpose. You just do the right. Yeah. The hashtag. Exactly right. Hustling. And so you have a lot of people who are very busy who are kind of following other people's purposes. Yeah. And they're spending all this time not really becoming anything. Mm-hmm. Right. And so if step one is you know what do you want? What is your vision and definition of success? As Maxim says, then step two is is saying well what do you have to offer? And so uh, what do you have to offer now and uh, who could you become in relationship to the vision of success uh, that you are creating? Uh, And then what does that look like broken down into a daily schedule of how do I connect? um, How do I embody that vision Mm -hmm. in a way that um, produces meaningful value personally, socially and uh, within the marketplace mm-hmm. every single day. Um, so yeah, that's my, like my summary. Of, uh, yeah. No, and I, you got thoughts. And I, I think it's, it really ties into what thought leaders is. So yeah. as we've defined thought leaders, this whole podcast is created on the platform of helping people to define what it is to have exceptional vision, mm. um, really defining what it looks like to have really good abilities in the marketplace that you're going into and then having a, a spirit-led influence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you have those elements, vision, ability, and influence, right. that's how you can really have a profound impact, and that's really what it means to be a thought leader. So I think mm-hmm. both of you guys really you really am, uh, encompass what it really means to be a thought leader, and I think both of these books give you the tools <clears throat> to develop vision, ability, and influence in whatever place that you're called to. Yeah. So really want right. to thank you guys for being a part yeah. of the podcast. And uh, before we close here, I just want to ask you guys each a, a final question, 60 seconds or less here, Maxim and uh, Coach Bert. So many people watching are in a crisis. So many people watching, they're at that switch and they just can't hit that that up, you know, that, that on. Maxim, what would you say to someone right now who's watching that's in crisis on, on how they can find their courage? I would say... Imagine yourself in 10 years Mm. being the same person you are today. Mm. How miserable Mm. you would feel. Mm. And feel that feeling just for a few seconds. And then flip the switch. Mm. Mm. Because you couldn't allow yourself. You you, you could not stand yourself staying the same person. Mm. And looking yourself in the mirror in 10 years. Mm-hmm. And realizing all the missed opportunities and living with all that regret. Mm. So we know that there are two drivers, pain and pleasure. Mm-hmm. And 
I think that sometimes we underestimate the power of pain. Yeah. I think that we should use more mm -hmm. of pain and also the potential of pain right. to, yeah. to avoid that destination of just getting stuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. That's good. And with you, coach, like I said, you know, someone's at that switch. They can't even think to activate anything right now. And we're going to have people that are watching that are saying like that, that's me. I don't even yeah. know what it's like to flip that switch to mm -hmm. activate. Where can they start today? I say, when in doubt, take an action. Mm. And that drove my editor crazy. Uh, <laughs> she was like, what do you mean? And I'm like, as an editor, action, edit. action has always, when you don't know what to do, do something. Mm. Okay. I think it was Roosevelt that said the best thing you can do is the next right decision. The second best thing you can do is the wrong decision. And the worst thing you could do is to do, to make no decision. Mm. And I think when you don't know what to do, do something because that generates energy. Right. Pick up the phone and call somebody. Get lost in somebody else's dreams. Mm. Quit thinking about yourself. Right. Like take an action, and I think that that will circ that will start that prey drive activation up and going. So take an action, and through the pain yeah. we can persevere. Right. Hundred yes. percent. Stefan, how can they get the book? How can we uh, make sure people watch in here? Pick up a copy of Courage in Crisis and pick up a copy of Flip the Switch. Um, Amazon, yeah. where can Am they get them coached? Amazon where can they get a coach? Crisis sold everywhere. <laughs> and then I would imagine yours too, Amazon. Amazon, go yeah. get it. And for anybody watching, where can they follow you? Website, social media? Plug yourself. Maxim Asenov or Maxim with K-S-M-A-K-S-I-M. Instagram, Facebook, MaximAsenov.com. So be sure to give them a follow. And Coach? Yeah, just just search Coach Michael Burt. YouTube, lots of videos, lots of content. Coach Michael Burt or CoachBurt.com. And been Hello. an honor, privilege. As we say, uh, we'll put everything in the show notes so anyone can, uh, anyone who's following wants to follow you, they'll be able to do it quickly. And uh, thank you guys so much. Thank I you. a lot. Thank you. Honored a lot. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.